That's camera. cool. Dress them up. But... Can you tell us your thoughts about uh, today and Discovery coming in here? Well, I was very excited to see Discovery. I had the privilege of flying Discovery in uh, 1999, flying over Christmas, where we upgraded the Hubble Space Telescope. So I have a very close affinity with Discovery. Also, it was my first Hubble mission. I had the uh, ability to fly three missions to Hubble. I'm a big Hubble hugger. Uh, and of course, Discovery deployed Hubble. And we're just on the 22nd birthday of Hubble on orbit deployed by Discovery. Charlie Bolden was on that mission. So it's great to see Discovery. Although when I first came out here and saw Discovery on the ramp, there was sort of a little bit of an experience that I felt after we land in Florida and all the, you know, cel you know, the celebration of landing is done and we walked under the orbiter. And it sort of looked like Discovery was ready to be pulled into the orbiter processing facility getting turned around for its next flight. And so there's just a hint of sadness and then I thought, well, Discovery is coming for its next flight. It's the flight of imagination that kids will have seen Discovery because it is such an amazing vehicle, the space shuttle. So I'm, I'm looking forward not to just seeing it here on the ramp, but when it's inside and there's you know, hundreds of kids and people looking at it, and have the opportunity to appreciate all the things we've done with the space shuttle. Okay, go ahead. Um, the SpaceX launch on April 30th, what are your thoughts on uh, the spacecraft going up to the ISS? Well, I think it's great. I wish them the best of success. It's really hard to do, so I think we'll all be uh, filled with great expectations, and I wish them the best of luck. You have a question? Yes. Yeah. Reflect back. You said you're in orbit on uh, Christmas Eve. Okay. Do you have reflections back on the Apollo 8, that historic mission, and the Genesis one meeting back in those days? We did on orbit. We were we were really just working hard, and, and we had pressed to get to orbit to repair Hubble. Hubble at that time was not observing. The aperture door was closed, and it failed gyros, so it couldn't do science. So we looked at it as kind of a rescue mission. Uh, the weather was bad in the first attempt. Two days later, we tried again, and we got to orbit, and we were doing our work, and it was sort of, all of a sudden, we surprised ourselves, like, wow, you know, I just did a spacewalk on Christmas Eve, and tomorrow for Christmas, we're going to deploy the Hubble. Uh, and so we talked about, uh, you know, the, the genesis, the end of the beginning, and Frank Borman around the moon. Uh, you know, pretty neat to have that kind of perspective in modern historical times. That you know, this is the beginning of it all. And Discovery and Apollo, and you know, right behind us are the Gemini capsules and the Mercury capsules. You know, we've been able to experience the beginning of an amazing future for humankind. Um, what's um, in your opinion? What's the uh, what's the legacy that the space shuttle and the Discovery will have on science? I, you know, my personal view is the legacy is going to be deploying the Hubble Space Telescope, you know, bringing it back to life in 1999, preparing it, the uh, STS-82 mission in 1997, upgrading the instruments. People will look in the back and say, you know, Discovery has enabled amazing science. Okay. Good to see you. This is Mike Rensville. What emotions have you been doing? You know, the signing ceremony was, of course, the official handover, but, you know, seeing it out on the ramp, that was the big thing. And actually, my, my emotions were the same the first time I saw Discovery, <coughs> walking out to the pad, uh, or actually in the, in the processing facility, and then walking out to the pad, or just uh, two days ago, seeing it fly over Washington. I just get excited to see these patients. They're just so cool. Amazing vehicles. Amazing. the flyover occurred. Saying a lot of people, and if only they had done a flyover while the shuttle was still flying, maybe you would have been that in some enthusiasm. Do you, do you feel that um, the shuttle has been bottomed down all since the while it was flying? Do you visit it now? It's moving in this way. Well, I think there's, uh, it's human nature that you often don't appreciate something until it's gone. And you know, the space shuttle is no longer flying. It now becomes accessible for people to see. But I, I believe that Enterprise did a fly around DC. You know, when it came to the National Air and Space Museum many years ago, you know, this is sort of a repeat performance at the other end of that process. But you know, what I hope people take out of it is that you know, this is a glimpse of the future. There will be other space vehicles uh, that 
are going to go beyond well, lower orbit, but then they'll be some, at some point in you know, some commercial space like the vehicle here at the Air Space Museum that has repeated the feat of the space shuttle. And that's sort of led the way the usable vehicle or the space. Who knows what it means? James Dean, um, it seems like the first thing that ever come up when you talk about discovering is Hubble. I'm a Hubble hugger. Uh, the, the, the shuttle in, in, in its entirety, and especially Discovery. So, um, as someone who is so uh, such a big part of all those missions, we just speak about that aspect of his legacy and, and why that makes Discovery such a important deal. Actually, I, I've had uh, the privilege to be involved with all of the space shuttles. I flew uh, Endeavour on my first mission, then Atlantis, then Discovery, uh, then Columbia, and then Atlantis again. And my PhD thesis was actually a, an experiment in the payload bay of Challenger in 1985. So I've, the space shuttles have been my life. And, you know, I like all the vehicles. Each one has its different character. You know, the reason why Discovery is special for me is because it was my first Hubble mission. My first opportunity to do a spacewalk, so I actually you know, went outside of Discovery and was able to look back at Discovery from space. Uh, and it's it's a pretty amazing sight, I have to tell you, to be you know, up on the Hubble Space Telescope, like 30 feet, 10 meters above the space shuttle, and to look down and see this incredible system. You know, that brought me and my crewmates to orbit as a rocket. We're now using it as a workbench to repair the Hubble, and behind the orbiter. Uh, 350 miles below us is planet Earth going by at 5 miles a second. We didn't get very many chances to, to do that, but I had one chance where I was up on the Hubble looking down and could just look around and think, you know, this, this is just unworldly. You know, the humans are able to go to space, you know, travel so fast on a space shuttle, and go outside in cloth suits and repair a telescope. Uh, so, discovery is part of that memory. John, I'm Alan Boyle. Hi, Alan. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah. Now, uh, Senator Glenn said today that he felt that the shuttle could be uh, retired prematurely, and I've heard a lot of other former astronauts say that, they, that this brought more of a sense of disappointment for them, that they felt that the shuttle went before its time. How do you feel about that? Uh, do you feel that pang, or you, do you get that pang from, from your colleagues? Uh, I certainly get that pang from my colleagues. Uh, you know, I. I think, you know, there's a possibility we could have flown them for a little bit longer or, you know, extended them with some cost. I am actually extremely thankful that we are rolling Discovery into the Air and Space Museum and not, you know, burying its parts. You know, we flew out the space shuttle program successfully. We didn't lose another one. Uh, it would have been tragic. And so, you know, you can say, well, we could have or would have, um, but the fact is that, you know, the space shuttle program has ended with dignity, amazing accomplishments, and I'm just thankful for that. In fact, you know, I'll share with you, you know, a very small personal story that this morning, on my flight suit, for the first time uh, since uh, the loss of Columbia, I took my STS-107 pin off for this event because, you know, I felt like this is, you know, an apt celebration that we flew out the program safely after Columbia. You know, that affected me very deeply, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think. Now that we're where we are, I'm looking forward to getting the next space vehicles going and seeing uh, you know, the next American launch. Mike Isabella, APS News. Um, I'm, I'm, wonder, I'm wondering, in your opinion, what's the, um, what's the legacy that uh, the shuttle discovery and the space shuttle program in general will have on scientific discovery and the pursuit of science? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the Hubble Space Telescope. When you ask me what is the legacy of the Hubble, Hubble Space Telescope, um, I'm, I'm an amateur astronomer and I still follow what Hubble has done. We also put my first in the Chandler X-ray Observatory, which observes not in light, like visible light like Hubble does, but observes in X-rays. And so many of the satellites that we think of also Earth observation and space flight missions. And I should have mentioned this first, obviously the space station, because the shuttle was built to build a space station. And when the country decided to retire the shuttle, one of the stipulations on that was that we wouldn't retire until the space station was built. So now we have the Hubble Space Telescope, we have the space station, and we have um, all the data that we brought back, which is still being analyzed. So I think the shuttle was an extremely, extremely successful program. And also, what we're doing technically will help us design the next final one to the show. Thank you. Okay, right here, and then I'll, 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 we're going to go down here. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Hi, Eileen. I'm Clara. Oh, um, nice to see you again. Clara? Clara. Yes, yes I know you. Yes. Nice to meet you. Yes. Yes. Again. <laughs> so, what do you hope that kids, especially maybe even girls, uh, get out of coming to see discovery here? Oh, I think you're going to have a memory that will last a lifetime for them. I mean, if I was a young person out here, I would remember this forever. In fact, I remember my first trip to the Air and Space Museum. I think I was 16 or 17 years old. So, and that's something that actually helped me decide that I wanted to go to flying someday and I wanted to become an astronaut someday. So I know there were a lot of young people out here, girls and boys, that will see Discovery and our administrator, Charlie Bolton, mentioned in the speech today that yes, we are building a rocket that will take us farther away from Earth, beyond the Earth orbit, that will take us back to the moon, onto Mars, onto the asteroids. Wherever we go with it, there is a mission for the young people who want to be not just astronauts but want to take part in the space program. There's going to be, there will be a mission for them, hopefully in the not too distant future. Thank you so much. Any space has been a step in which we should be maximizing research as a benefit to people right here. Uh, that's why we have this one. We spent a billion dollars building the International Space Station because it has more capability to do basic research. The shell can only stay up for about two weeks, so it was limited in time period for research. But the station can uh, take on research projects that last for years. And uh, those may well be the most beneficial ones to us here. Are we taking time to get together? Do you have anyone have a question here? I do. Clara Moss, Space.com. Hi, Clara. Hi. Uh, what emotions went through you today when the discovery became a museum artifact officially? <laughs> Well, I'm sorry to see that happen, but uh, it, it's going to be an inspiration for a lot of our young people here. Uh, museums are made to inspire, to not only let people know what happened in the past, but to inspire people to do their own thing in their own time in the future. And I think Discovery will be a, actually Discovery is an excellent example of that. I think it will inspire our young people here. And uh, it's uh, in the days of Friendship 7. Uh, where we were just trying to find out if we could go into space and operate in space. Uh, Discovery became a, a orbital laboratory of its own and a way of getting to the International Space Station where we do all sorts of research that are benefit to people right here on Earth. And uh, I don't I never have seen the space program as <laughs> one Well exploration is one thing. I think at each step as we go into space. Wherever we are in that exploration phase, we should maximize the research return wherever we are. And that makes it a value right here on Earth. So I see the discovery role as being one of the words changed to be an example. It's a good example of what was possible in our time. It's the most complex vehicle ever put together, I think. And uh, it inspire young people to do their own thing in the future. Thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you. Mike Musnell, APS News. Um, just kind of building on that, what do you think is the legacy of the space shuttle and manned spaceflight that it will have on the pursuit of science and the pursuit of knowledge? Oh, it's revolutionized the pursuit of science and knowledge, I think. Science, technology, engineering, man, all have benefited from the program. And it, the programs that have enabled us to run into space have occurred uh, because we made advances in science and technology and engineering and man to STEM studies as well. <laughs> but uh, this is only the beginning, and I think that uh, while I may have preferred that the shuttle keep flying a bit longer, uh, that decision is made behind us or other programs, so let's get on with it. Uh, I think it can be a great inspiration to people to what was possible in our time and let them develop that as a stepping stone to greater things in the future. The patriotic music was perfect. Uh, the view on the jumbo trucks was terrific. Uh, the audience was lively and engaged. Have you heard any estimates of how many people turned out? I haven't yet, and uh, I tried to to look to get a sense of how far back the crowd extended, but I'm short, and so I couldn't see over the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if if we filled the parking lot today, which we surely must have done, uh, we have 2,000 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we have shuttle buses dropping people off and taxis and all that. Uh, so we say if you average four people per vehicle, we could have maybe 8,000 people here at any one time, eight to 10. On our Be a Pilot Day, which we hold on 
Father's Day weekend, mm -hmm. we typically have 18 to 20,000 people over the course of the day. So people come and leave and others come and leave and that sort of thing. We're expecting a second wave this afternoon when school lets out mm -hmm. and that families will come in and then after 4 o'clock we'll probably have another wave because the parking is waived at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could conceivably fill the parking lot three times, but mm -hmm. we probably won't know the count until the morning. Mm -hmm. Technical question. I saw that you had difficulty getting the bars out. Yeah. Of that. Will yeah. you be able to close it tonight? With uh, the it will be temporarily closed tonight, I think, and then seriously closed tomorrow. Apparently what happened, I, don't, I haven't talked to the guy in charge yet, so this is just my impression of what happened was when we bought Enterprise in, uh, the people who did the closeout of that slit weren't reminded that we were going to need to open it again someday. <laughs> because we, we always thought we would someday have to open it again. And so they welded the bars in place instead of bolting them in place. And so they had to get some kind of saws and literally saw through the bars uh, to get them out. And that was continuing right up until about 6.45 this morning. <laughs> So are you going to fold it back in place? Are you going to weld it back yeah, in place? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think we'll ever move this stuff out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, unless the building itself is damaged or something. But uh, I haven't talked to... Uh, did you ever met Rich Walter and talk to him? He's in our collections division. I think briefly. Yeah. Uh, if you want to talk to him, he was the one who was uh, in charge of all those logistics. He would be a good interview for that kind of nitty gritty detail. And uh, Isabel or Brian could sure. hook you up yeah. with him. Now, is, the, is the plan still fit in? Start moves at 4 and right. in by 7, you think? Well, she'll be uh, wheel we'll stop. It will might be in by about 5.30. Oh. Uh, you know, it, the move in this morning went so smoothly, and the move out of Enterprise went so smoothly that they're thinking it's going to go faster than anticipated, and it, it might all be done by 5.30 to 6. <laughs> So um, I would say plan to plan to be outside around four o'clock to watch the shuffle start, and then when it becomes evident that Discovery is moving toward this hangar, this whole mezzanine up here will be and also of course the catwalk and the floor area where you were this morning. But the mezzanine will give you kind of a different view, different angle. Mm -hmm. To me though, the best spot to be when it's coming through the slit is kind of right in front of it because you see daylight on both sides of the vehicle's stabilizer and, and, and you kind of see the unique configuration. Mm -hmm. Students coming in tomorrow. Okay. Oh, we do. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi. Mike Isabella, APS. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, in your opinion, what, do you, what is the uh, legacy that the Space Shuttle has had on the pursuit of science and scientific knowledge? Uh, the legacy of, sh of shuttle can be seen not every night, but many nights if you go outside and look overhead and see this big bright star that's running across the sky in the International Space Station. That, that is the legacy of shuttle. It, it is only through shuttle that we were able to produce the International Space Station, which is the toehold on our universe for deep space exploration for humans. So as NASA works to get humans to Mars and asteroids and other places like that, that's because we had the shuttle uh, as, the, as the workhorse to, to make that possible for us. What's your favorite memory of Discovery? Oh, I, I was telling somebody down the line, my favorite memory of Discovery is not about flying. I, my favorite memory, my most cherished memory of Discovery is the experience I had of creating the friendship between Sergei Krikalov and Vladimir Titov, who were, Sergei and I were crew members on Discovery, my last flight. First joint Russian-American shuttle mission, but just the opportunity to be a part of bringing their families to the United States for a couple of years talk about our different cultures, learn about each other, and become very good friends. That's the most cherished thing out of, out of my time in Discovery. Being in Hubble, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad when you talk about on orbit, you know, in-flight kinds of things that, that you'll remember forever. Okay. Yeah. Robert, have you got a question? Um, the, 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 uh, having a, the space shuttle here in Washington, D.C., do um, you think it's going to have an effect on, on in bringing the space program into pub the public's imagination? I think it already has. If you look at what was, ha I wasn't here, but if you look at what happened on Tuesday, when people came from miles around, or people who didn't even know about it, you know, saw people looking up, got out of their cars and saw it and marveled, um, people, people are impressed when they have an opportunity to see something. The big 
big deal about bringing discovery here to Udvahazi is that millions of people come through here uh, over the course of a year from all over the world. And they'll have an opportunity through the education programs here to learn about space and science and, and discovery. Uh, and hopefully what we'll be able to do is we hand off access to low Earth orbit to private companies as we're going to do with SpaceX and Orbital this summer. Uh, and we complete the development of our heavy lift launch vehicle, the multi-purpose crew vehicle Orion, and we start to fly humans to deep space destinations, you know, within, within the next five years or so. Uh, I think we're going to reignite the excitement that people used to have. Uh, I think a lot of people still have it, those who are space enthusiasts, but, but I think we're going to bring back the excitement to people who never dreamed about space never thought about uh, you know what it's like to be out there and that, and that kind of stuff and it's actually going to start this summer trust me when when the Mars when uh, when MSL when curiosity lands on Mars in August and people start seeing images from the red planet in high definition color that is going to excite the imagination in ways that I think we we haven't even begun to imagine yet it'll be sort of like Hubble you know people had ideas about what Hubble was going to do Nobody had any any imagination that Hubble was going to open up our universe the way that it has, that it was going to make school kids want to go online and, and see another Hubble image. I think that's what Curiosity is going to do this August when we land on Mars. And then that's going to be, you know, the, the big advantage of, um, of, of having science go on. People need to understand we are about science and exploration. When we have, uh, you know, SpaceX launch here on the 30th of this month, uh, that's going to reignite interest in people who just like to see things leave the planet. Uh, and it's going to be the first time that a private company is going to launch a vehicle from, from, from Earth for themselves. Not for the Army or Navy or Air Force, Marine Corps or NASA, but for themselves to demonstrate that it can be done. And then the piece de resistance, if you want to say that, is several days later when they rendezvous with the International Space Station, get checked out, and then astronauts on board station reach out and grasp this private vehicle, attach it and make it a part of the International Space Station for a number of days. That's the beginning of an entirely new era and that's going to rewrite the history books. So that we, there are a lot of things you should all be excited about in helping us tell the story and, and it begins the end of this month. So this was the beginning of the new era, bringing discovery here and, and having people celebrate the incredible 30 year history uh, of, the internet, of, of, of the shuttle program. But its legacy is the International Space Station, its private space enterprise, its going to Mars and going to asteroids and all that kind of stuff. That's what people who died on Columbia and Challenger gave their lives for, so that other people can do the kinds of things that they dreamed about. Okay? Thanks very much. Jeff, you got a question? Yeah, quick one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, no worries. <laughs> he got do, me spun up. <laughs> do do events, like do the shuttle transition events like this, what's going to come up in New York and LA, help you tell the story about the future of NASA or do they complicate it because people see the end of the shuttle and they think the end of NASA? I think they help us immensely because shuttle's uh, phase out was necessary. It, it's like anything, you know, in order to move on to another phase of life, you've got to get the other part done and, uh, and celebrate it and then move on. Uh, you know, getting, sh getting discovery here so that people can see how we got to this part of our exploration uh, experience is important. We should never forget uh, what was done in the 30 years of the shuttle program, but it was all done for the purpose of getting us to the next phase of exploration. We never dreamed about staying in low Earth orbit forever. That, that's never been anybody's desire. Uh, it was just time and circumstances and budget did not allow us to go on. Um, you know, President Obama took a, a bold leap and said, okay, We've talked about doing this, but we're really going to do it. We're going to phase out shuttle. We're going to give access to low Earth orbit responsibility to private enterprise. And I want to make NASA go off and do things that they wanted to do, but just haven't had the wherewithal to do this. And that's what we're excited about, building a heavy lift launch vehicle in Orion uh, and getting on the way to Mars and asteroids and other kinds of things. And it's going to happen, you know, in, in the coming decade. So, so we're excited about it. James, you got a question? You're good? Good. Alan, hey, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank thanks to all of you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
It's going to be hard. Well, you think this is the best home for her? Definitely. Discovery's got a great home. I mean, look at the people here come out today. And hopefully it's like this every day for it. It'll be awesome. Have you felt the buzz of all the public? Have you felt it? Oh, yeah. I've seen it and felt it. I mean, I was watching TV when she flew over here and it was like parking lot full, you know. Totally awesome. It was like a shuttle launch, you know. It was cool. What's going to be your best memory of this day? Just right now, spotting her where she's going to be. She'll never move again, you know. And I was part of putting her here, so I'll never forget that. Back. Soon, uh, probably in a month and a half, three days, and four hours. I'll be here. Congratulations, man. Thanks, man. Hang, hang on one second.